What's up guys and welcome back to another math video from the Scalar Learning Channel. Today I am working through some problems that were sent to me, sent to me by one of my uh, YouTube subscribers and Instagram followers, Ashley. So Ashley, what's up? Uh, as promised, I'm making this video for you to work through some of these geometry problems involving the law of cosines. So these problems definitely can be tricky. I put up a visual right here as well that states the law of cosines. And I'm going to kind of show you how it works as we solve these problems. Now for the first section that was sent to me, the side lengths for one have been filled in. You see that AB is 8, BD is 7, and that's marked there. DC is 5 and AC is 10. So here's how it works. Now look, um, what is designated as A, B, or C can vary. Uh, and I'm going to show you how that exactly operates. And we're trying to find this unknown AD, which I'm going to highlight. We got this side. This is our unknown. This is what we're finding. Okay. So first, um, I see for the entire triangle, notice here, Ashley wrote 12, which is great. I'm going to kind of go like that. So we got 12 like that. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to use the law of cosines and what it, why is there a distinction between big C and little c? The little letters represent uh, the sides and the big one represents angles like you could have big A, B or C as well. So don't get them confused with the A, B, C markings here per se. But the important part is that these are both C and they have a connection which means this side is opposite this angle. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So again, in this case, this is the angle that is going to be paired with this side. We're going to use this law of cosines to find this missing angle. This missing angle will then be the key to finding AD. So let's set it up. First, again, so since these two are matched and paired because I'm trying to find this angle, 10 becomes my C. So 10 equals, or it would be 10 squared equals, and then A or B. Now again, I, in this first case, I'm dealing with this entire triangle because I have all the sides for the triangle. That's what allows me to basically carry out law of cosines. So I've got 10 squared equals. Now it doesn't matter which one is 12 and which one is eight in terms of A and B. No, that's the beauty of it. So it's eight squared, I'll just say that's A plus B, which would be 12 squared minus two times eight times 12 times cosine of C. And this is my unknown. And now we've got one unknown in equation. That's all we need. So now let's execute. So we got 100 equals 64 plus 144 is 208, right? Let's make sure, 64, 144, 64, 204, 208, minus two times eight times 12, that is 24 times eight is 160, 192, cosine of C. We're gonna calculate calculator for this. Then I'll subtract 208 from both sides, that's negative 108, equals negative 192 cosine of C divided by negative 192, right? We're just isolating. Then with the calculator, let's calculate that. 108 divided by 192 equals 0.5625. Is that rounding nicely? Yeah, there we go. So then I'm gonna write it up here. Cosine of C equals 0.5625 and then to find the angle, angle C, by the way, angle C is again, angle B. Just, you know, I'm just following the formula, but don't get it twisted with the with these actual labelings. Now, to solve for this, we take the arc cosine, right, of this and of that. Kind of take, it kind of eliminates the cosine. And so arc cosine, and put in degrees, don't forget. I'll put in degrees, it actually doesn't matter. Arc cosine of 0.565 equals 55.77, okay? So now we know that C is roughly 55.77 degrees. I'm just gonna round to the nearest hundred, hundredth arbitrarily. All right, now we can again go back. I'm gonna kind of move this up so I have more room. Now we can again use law of cosines again, but in this case, we're gonna use the, a different triangle that involves AD. We're gonna use this triangle, okay? And now, AD is going to be our unknown C angle, the little c. So for example, if I go back here, now this is going to be my unknown. So check it out. It's going to be C squared, which again, C, this little baby C represents the unknown AD. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now these are the two sides. These become the A and B. Which one is which? It doesn't matter. Let's say 8 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 8 times 7 
cosine of, and I'm going to get put in that rounded answer, 55.77. And this is pretty awesome because we don't even have to isolate. Everything is already isolated, and let's just plug it in. So I got 64 plus 49, that's 7, 8 squared plus 7 squared. Um, and then it's going to be minus this whole quantity. Let's write that down, 113, minus this whole quantity. So 2, two times 8 times 7 times cosine of 55.77, make sure we're degrees, which we are. Um, let me make sure I didn't make any mistakes, boom. And then it's this minus 63.0018, whatever. Um, so I'll just write 113 minus second answer is that. But then that's C squared equals this value, right? 49.998, whatever. So we might, now last step, we gotta take the square root of both sides. Square root of second answer equals 7.07. .07. So AD in this case, it's 7.07. .07. And that's it. And that feels like an appropriate answer. This is seven, this is eight, this is 7.07. .07. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that makes sense. It's also opposite of 55.77 degree angle, which means, yeah, that also seems reasonable that it's like in between these two, this angle's probably a little smaller. Uh, so it logically feels appropriate. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with question two, but just with different values. So let's go ahead and clear the calculator. Let's bring back law of cosine. Okay, so now AB is five. We've got BD is five, we've got DC is three, and I've got AC is seven. And this whole length, of course, is eight. And we, again, still wanna find AD, right? So now, let us I'm gonna follow the same exact protocol. Let's make this the unknown angle and let's go for it. Although, actually, this one's kinda of interesting because this is an isosceles. Yeah, but I think we still must use the law of cosine, okay. So we've got my, this is gonna be my unknown C angle, which means the seven is opposite that. So again, I, I could have used this angle too. I'm just choosing this arbitrarily. I could have used this angle and this triangle, but I'm gonna go with this one. So I have seven squared equals A squared plus B squared. Again, we're doing the big triangle this time. So it's equals five squared plus eight squared, right? Um, minus, let's make, let's cut this out. So don't go on that dark part. You can't read what I'm writing. Minus two times a, again, which you've arbitrarily chosen as five and eight, which you've chosen as the B cosine of my unknown angle, which we're solving for us. So let's follow the same steps again. 49 equals 25 plus 64, which is 89, 25, 64, 89, right? Minus 1080 minus 80 cosine of C. So I'm gonna subtract 89 from both sides, negative 40 equals negative 80 cosine C. And then we divide by that, that's one half equals cosine C. We're gonna get a nice round number here, I think 45 or something, right? Then we take arc cosine of both sides to kind of get rid of this. So arc cosine or inverse cosine 0.5 or one half is, oh yeah, 60, that's right, I'm not 45. So C equals 60 degrees, okay? That's great, so that means this angle is 60 in this case. I'll put a little 60 degrees there. Okay, now we run run through it one more time. Oh, by the way, again, because this is, this is isosceles, not that it really matter, uh, not that it really matters, but these two angles here are gonna be congruent, this one and this one, right, these two? And that means they're both, wait a minute, this is an equilateral triangle. If that's 60, those two have to be 60. This is five. So we don't even actually have to do much more work, but let's just use the law of cosines and, and prove it. Why not? Because I, I assume that's what your teacher wants you to do. So in this case, this is my now my unknown. Don't pretend we don't know it's five, so I'll call it C squared <coughs> equals A squared plus B squared minus two a b cosine of 60. Okay. That becomes 25, 25, that's 50, oops, equals 50 minus two times five times five is also 50 cosine of c. We already know that cosine, I'm uh, sorry, cosine of 60, not c. 
cosine of 60. I already know cosine of 60 is one half, oops, right? So this becomes one half times 60, which is 25. So this becomes c squared equals 50 minus 25, which is 25 square root square root c equals five and this is the unknown side of ad in this example all right next find the length of the median from a in triangle abc okay so same triangle okay so i'm going to draw a new one out here four six and eight and we want the median so then the a is eight so this would be our big A. Um, B is four, so this would be our big B. You see what I'm saying, how the angles are opposite? And if that's six, which is C, then this would be big C. Okay, so we want a median to drop down from A. And what is a median? A median is where it splits this side into halves, right? Four and four. And we wanna find the length. Okay, let's go for it. So again, we need to find one of these missing angles. I'm probably gonna do just the C again. So I have six squared, because I gotta use that as my C as well, right? C, six squared equals A squared plus, and again, we'll do the big triangle, A squared plus B squared, four squared plus eight squared minus two A B, oh, let's get the formula up here, minus two A B, oops, cosine of unknown. All right, so then let's write it up here. I'm gonna change this back to one thickness. So it's 36 equals 16 plus 64 is 80 minus 32 times two is 64, cosine of C. Subtract 80 from both sides. That's negative 44 equals negative 64, cosine of C. Divide by negative 64. Negatives cancel out, so 44 divided by 64 equals 0.6875. All right, and then take arc cosine of both sides. Make sure we're in degrees, which we are. Inverse cosine of second answer equals 46.57. Say C equals 46.57 degrees. That's this angle right here. 46.57. Okay, now we run through law of cosines one more time with that new angle measure. And again, now we're focusing on the little triangle. Okay, same deal. So let's get our formula. So I got, now my new C squared is my unknown. Oh yeah, this is, uh, yeah, my, I, I could put a D here if I wanted to call it AD, but it's, it's this line right here. Now let me highlight it. All right, so then I'll say C squared, which is my unknown equals a squared plus B squared, now my A and B are both four. A squared plus B squared minus two times A times B cosine of, what's that angle? 46.57. All right, let's take it away. 16, 16, 32, oops. 32 minus 16, oh, that's also 32. 32 times cosine of this whole thing equals c squared, and let's just plug it into the calculator. So we got 32 minus 32 times cosine, and we got that as the second answer of second answer. And then last but not, ooh, it's a nice 10. Square, c squared equals 10, then we take the square root of both sides, and you know, if we do a decimal approximation, we can leave it like that, or we can take the square root of 10. And we get 3.16. All right, and that is this length here. And this again makes sense because it's smaller than these guys. These guys are equal. These two angles are gonna be bigger than 46.57, right? They'll be about like 70 or something, or 68 maybe. Uh, and and so it all, it all checks out. Last one, parallelogram has an angle of four, well, first of all, if we're talking about a parallelogram and they don't have a diagram, that's no good. Okay, we gotta draw it out. Okay, so we've got, I'll say this angle is 40. And if that's 40, this one, let's not do the degree symbol, it looks fun. And then this one is also 40, right? Uh, and then these two op other opposite angles are equal. That adds up to 80. The whole thing adds up to 360. So we could say this is 140. And 140. 
right? These are sup as they should be. And then it has side lengths of 25 and 40. So the opposite of the 40, I'm sorry, uh, this side is gonna be the shorter side, so let's call this 25 just so it looks nice. And this side is 30. How long are its diagonals? Okay. Let's go ahead and draw these diagonals and let's do it in, yes, let's do it in black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one diagonal away. I'm gonna go one at a time. Um, and the reason why is because I just, I just don't, I, I just don't want to get it looking too crazy. So I'll, I'll draw on the other one afterwards and let's highlight this one like this. Okay, so that's our unknown. So we got everything we need to apply the law of cosines here, right? So that's our C. Let's put the formula back up. So I got C squared, which is my unknown equals A squared and B squared, right? Of this triangle like this. 25 squared plus 30 squared minus 2AB cosine of what's opposite the unknown? 40. Straight up plug that in. We're good to go. 25 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 25 times 30 times cosine of 40. So then c squared equals this. Repeating. Square root, square root, c equals, let's take the square root of this. Square root of second answer. 19.39. Round it to the nearest hundredth. Boom. All right. Now we need to find the other diagonal. I'll do this. I'm going to just actually straight up make it in blue so it stands out a little bit. Okay. Now we get a different triangle, right? We still got those same sides of 30 and 25. So again, now my blue is the unknown. The opposite angle is 140. So check it out. Same deal. C squared, my unknown, equals A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times... 2 times A times B times cosine of, and this time the angle is 140. That's the angle opposite the unknown. 140. Okay, plug it in. 25 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 25 times 30 times cosine of 140. Make sure again we're in degrees, which we are. And then we take the square root of that, right? C squared equals 2674.07. Square root, square root. We take the square root of the exact answer, or pretty much exact. And we get 51.71. Now you wanna look at these answers and say, do they make sense, right? The, the 19 really does because it's opposite of 40. These guys are gonna be bigger, you know, these are bigger sides, they're gonna be bigger angles. It makes sense, right? To be smaller than 25. As this one makes sense to be so gigantic of 51, I'd say it does because it's opposite a massive angle of 140. You know, maybe it's not drawn exactly to scale, but I'd say 51, it makes sense to me. Uh, and, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this explanation of the law of cosines. And if you did like this video, please click that like button. If you want to see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. And if you want to see math problems that you're struggling with solved on my channel, hit me up on Instagram or send me a message, an email, and I'll do my best to make a video for you as well. Ashley, best of luck, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy.